workshop, learn more about Best of Missouri Hands Visiting Artist Program with, with Nina Miller and Kim Carr. I'm Allison Northfleet Bringer, and I just have a little bit of housekeeping for everybody. In our workshop today, we would like everyone to please stay mute. If you have any questions or issues, please use your chat feature. You can find the, ch um, the chat button at the bottom of your taskbar on your screen. Make sure to get your paper and pen handy for notes. Near the end of the workshop, we will open up the floor for a little Q&A. Um, for this workshop, for the Best of Missouri Hands members, is going to be Nina Miller and Kim Carr. Ladies, would you like to introduce yourselves? Good morning, everybody. Glad to see you here today. And uh, um, we're excited to um, get started again with our Zoom workshops for Best of Missouri Hands. Um, most of you probably know I'm Kim Carr. I uh, help uh, Best of Missouri Hands with uh, social media and newsletter and uh, doing the Zoom workshops and such. So uh, excited to kick off 2022 with uh, more great info here. So enjoy yourself. And uh, I'm going to pass it on over to Nina Miller. She's also a board member of Best Missouri Hands and a glass artist and uh, on the uh, visiting artist uh, program committee. So, Nina, we're glad to have you here today and uh, welcome. Thanks, Kim. <clears throat> so, I discovered glass fusing when I was a parent volunteer at my son's schools, and we made birthday gifts every year for the teachers. Um, I've always loved talking to people about art, both my own and others' art. And in addition to doing shows and exhibits, I've worked in several galleries, uh, currently at Artisans in the Loop. Um, I come from a family of teachers. And even though I was never a classroom teacher myself, I was the children's event specialist at a Borders bookstore. And I handled all the children's events and I did a weekly story time. My love of talking about art and my interest in sharing knowledge with children led me to volunteer as a Best of Missouri Hands visiting artist. And I've done visits now for three years uh, and I wanna help coordinate other artists' visits to school. Well, so, well, we're appreciative of you taking over this program. And uh, um, for those that don't know, could you just kind of explain a little bit about what is the Visiting Artist Program? Sure. Um, traditionally, we send juried artists into schools for classroom presentations. Uh, artists bring samples of their work and talk about their process. The artist demonstrates or can offer a slideshow. Uh, like a PowerPoint presentation. They talk about how they decided to become an artist, the training involved, what it's like, how they sell their work. Presentations are given to art classes, kindergarten through 12th grade, and the length of the talk is usually one art period. Uh, they allow time for students to ask questions and they might bring a project for students to complete. Okay, well, so, it sounds like Best Miser Hands is getting artists into um, the classrooms and stuff. As we all know, right now, COVID has the world kind of turned upside down. So um, so if, if the visits can't be done in person right now, are we offering a virtual type program? Yeah, I, I've actually done classroom visits in three different ways. Um, I've been live in the classroom where the teacher the students and I were all in the classroom together. Um, and then I've also gone to the other extreme where all of us were at home, the students at their houses, the teacher at her house uh, and me at my house. And then last year we did kind of a hybrid version of it where um, I was at home, but the students and the teacher were in the classroom. And that, that every different way has its merits and its detractions. Um, of course, ideally, everybody in the classroom works the best, but we made it work each of the three different ways. And I'm thinking right now, probably many of the teachers and students are in the classroom 
and the artists will be at home. And it can be done successfully that way. Uh, you can even do a, a project. Okay. So, so I'll talk about that. Yeah. Could you kind of explain how yeah, yeah. If you're at home um, making something? How, how, do, how do the students do a project? Sure. Well, with everything that we're all using right now, a uh, computer and a camera and some way of, of communicating, um, hearing, talking, you can do a, a visit from home with the students in the classroom. It really helps to have a teacher that's kind of tech savvy. Um, that was how I was able to do it because the, the first teacher that I worked with, um, she really brought me along. I, my very first Zoom session ever was a Vesta Missouri Hands visiting artist presentation. Um, so we actually practiced ahead of time. We had our own private Zoom sessions um, I, we didn't go through the whole thing, but uh, it, it was very helpful to me since I had never used Zoom before. And um, it was also very helpful that Best of Missouri Hands was able to provide me with the stipend that I used. I didn't have a camera, I didn't have this headset. Um, and so I basically used my stipend to buy equipment. And um, then I put, um, I did supplies for the project um, where I, I took the supplies to the school ahead of time. I even took samples of my work to the school ahead of time. And since um, visitors weren't allowed physically in the school, I met the teacher on the sidewalk in, in front of the school, handed her a big box, uh, one box of um, supplies, two boxes actually, one of supplies, one of art samples, and then when she was in the classroom with the students and I was at home, uh, we talked about she would hold up the different pieces that I brought in as samples. And then I had provided um, a PDF of instructions for the project so that the students and supplies for it, so the, the raw supplies. And then when the, after the students um, session and they had put together their little glass pieces that um, they, they were making, the teacher taped them to a big cardboard sheet. And again, we met outside school on the sidewalk. I picked them up, brought them home to fire in my kiln, and then returned them about a week later for the students to take home. Um, the year that everybody was at home, it was a little bit different. And um, the students did a drawing of a glass piece that they wanted to complete. And all of that was sent to me through Dropbox and Google Drive, the teacher arranged all of that. And I created pieces from their drawings um, and then mailed them to them since everybody was at home. Um, so, you know, we've, we found a way to make it work. This has become a tradition for me with this one particular school where I do the same project every year with the sixth grade class, which is the highest grade in the school. And so, I didn't want to skip it, you know, even with COVID. So we've done it every year for, for the class. This year, uh, we had thought that I was going to be able to be in person in the school um, because I'm vaccinated and I, I can wear a mask and that was the requirement. But at the moment, they're back to not allowing visitors in the school. So we may do it the way we did it last year with me at home and, um, the, the um, students and the teacher there. So the, the teacher will make you a co-host on Zoom and that way you can share your screen um, to show photos or I, I made a PowerPoint because my studio at home is in the basement. My computer is a desktop and it's upstairs. So I took pictures of my workspace, my kilns, um, pieces in progress, supplies, and I made a, just a little PowerPoint presentation and the teacher helped me, you know, figure out, I didn't know how to do any of it. So she directed me to share my screen during my talk and we went through the different slides um, so I could basically show the kids my studio and, and everything right, right from home. Um, in a way, I have this thing that I call um, pandemic plus where things that 
I feel have come out of the pandemic that are actually good. And I would never in a million years allow anybody into my studio at home because it's such a mess. Um, but by being able to take pictures of it, I could you know, make sure that I only showed the parts that I wanted other people to see. And that way the, the kids got a visit to my studio, which would, would never have happened. Um, so when they, um, at school, they had a big TV screen and uh, um, I don't know if anybody is, remembers Max Headroom, but um, I felt like Max Headroom on the big screen. And uh, when the teacher took pictures of the, the presentation, there I was, the big talking head and the students in the classroom. And the students would walk up to the screen to ask questions. And so I actually, I, I felt you know, pretty much like I was there with them. It was a little weird, but, um, you know, it, it can, can be done. So um, I set up, um, instead of a virtual background, which doesn't work if you're moving around because, you know, it gets, the screen gets, gets weird. Um, I put up a backdrop behind me here in my, because um, I'm in my living room and I don't really need everybody to see the doorways and stuff. Sometimes my son's sitting behind me and I thought, yeah, we're not going to show that on camera. Um, so I put a backdrop behind me and set up a folding table and brought up uh, materials and supplies. And um, I could do my demonstration right from here. Well, that's, uh, it sounds like you put a lot of preparation into your presentation and stuff for um, the kids and we appreciate that. Now I know that in the past I um, visited a school and stuff like that and I didn't have a project for the kids um, to complete. So you don't have to have a project for you because like I basically explained, um, you know, uh, best Missouri hands and, and uh, you know, how I got started in photography and uh, um, shared some tips and tricks with the kids and stuff like that. And, and I brought some old cameras and everything from the look at and asked me questions and stuff. So you don't actually have to have a project for the kids to complete. Is that correct? Is that still true? That, that's that, absolutely. And in fact, um, I was looking through um, Mary's records of the visits from the last few years. And of course, last year and the year before, there really weren't very many visits, but um, prior to that, there were quite a few, and it looked like most people did not do a project. And I, I think that that's something that you just, you need to discuss with the teacher um, because you're not going to have a lot of time. You have one classroom art period. And if you have enough to talk about and enough to show and to demonstrate, uh, there may not be time for a project unless the teacher wants to you know to allow more um, class time but uh, most of the time they don't do it and I think that the the good thing about what I've done is that I sort of um, you know I now that I've done it all these different ways I can provide guidelines for people who want to do it from you know just getting on zoom you can do it as simply as getting on zoom like this and talking about your art and maybe um, showing a slideshow or showing some actual um, samples of your work and it can last 20 minutes. Um, or, you know, you can, it, it, it just, it's, it's entirely up to you how much time and planning and everything that you wanna put into it. I, I, I know that, uh, like you said, the pandemic plus something that's positive that's come out of this is, uh, you know, like for myself, uh, when I visited the school, I wanted a school within a reasonable distance from my home, you know, because I had to do chores in the morning and get to the school. And, and uh, so the plus on this is that now we can do presentations. So I could present to a class in Springfield, Missouri, you know, or up in Kansas City and, and still get my chores done. Right. So, so that's fantastic. So, but like, and you also mentioned that you got a stipend. So can you kind of explain why would why would one of our artists, I mean, other than the fact that it's really cool, I mean, when you got a classroom of kids, 
saying how neat you are. That's that kind of feeds the ego and stuff. But why would one of our members want to be a visiting artist, be in this program? Well, um, lots of reasons. That you're giving the students a chance to meet a professional artist and learn about your work. And there are some students in areas where they may never see professional art. They, they may not live near an art museum or a gallery. And um, so it gives them a chance to see actual professionally made artwork um, and to ask questions of the artist about the work. And how many times have you been in a museum and you wish you see a piece and you wish that you could talk to the artist about, about what they did? Um, I think that it really deepens one's appreciation for art um, when you have a chance to look at it up close and talk to the artist about it. Um, and I, th I think that for me personally, I learned a lot of new schools, new skills by doing this. Um, I, like I said, I had never used Zoom before and I didn't know anything about uh, PowerPoint even. I mean, I, I learned a lot of, I wanted to learn the, the new skills that, that I needed to use or felt I needed to use. So that made me feel good. Um, and the first year of the pandemic where we were all at home, the students were very sad. And I mean, I could just see it on their faces. A lot of them sort of sitting in the dark and it, Zoom was new to them too at the time. And I felt like they spent so much of their day in front of the screen doing um, regular schoolwork that maybe this could be a bright spot for them where they got to look at art and maybe do an art project. Um, it, it showed them that we could overcome obstacles and it showed them that art is important, um, things that I think are valuable. Right, and, and, and so, and you also mentioned the stipend. So the artists are paid something for doing this? Yes, for the basic one school, one class period visit, artists get $100. And then um, there, there are some requirements involved in that. There's some documentation um, that needs to be done. And I think we're gonna we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes, but um, you do need to be a juried artist and you can find your own school or I will help you find a school and like, you said, Kim, now it doesn't need to be a neighborhood school. You could actually visit a school hundreds of miles away. Um, so I think I need to do a better job of getting the word out to schools to let them know that this is possible, that they can have an artist uh, visit. Um, we are using money, or, or we have been from the Missouri Arts Council grant um, to supply the artists with the, the $100 stipend. And then this year we decided in order to help artists to cover the expenses of a project, we will reimburse uh, you up to $100 for supplies. And there's, there are no receipts required um, because we realize that probably most people will just use supplies that they already have on hand. They're not going to go out and, and buy things. So you just would let me know how much you've spent on your supplies up to $100. So you could potentially get $200 from a school visit. Well, and, and I've found that artists are pretty honest people. We, we've got a good group of people and stuff. So I'm sure that, uh, um, you know, that, yeah, Trust yeah. comes in there both ways and stuff. So, so how does someone sign up to, to become a visiting artist? Um, they just have to email me, call me. Um, I have about a dozen people who have done that already. And then um, any, any accredited school, uh, kindergarten through 12th grade, um, we're also talking about the idea of expanding this to a senior center. So if you want to do 
um, a demonstration. If you have a contact with an independent living place, assisted living, retirement village, uh, you could potentially do most likely a Zoom visit for them too. And um, it, it's most helpful, I think, for you, the artist, to go out and find the school. But if that's just not something that you can do, then I will find somebody for you. So, so like, uh, I actually I'm have a school right now. I'm sorry. Sorry. I was just going to say, so like someone could. No, I just, I have a school right now that wants a fiber artist. And so of the, of the artists who have contacted me who are interested in doing a visit, I don't have a fiber artist. Um, now I know Christine, you're, I think planning to um, try to jury in, in, in fiber. So um, maybe this would be something that you would want to do. Um, Cause I know right now you're, you're a glass artist, um, but there is a school out there that wants a fiber artist. And this is actually a school with a very tech savvy teacher who will just bring you right along. Okay, so, so basically um, they, our artists would contact you and they could get put like on a list or something. So if a teacher contacts you and re request a glass artist or, or a painter or something like that, you can pull from that list contact those artists and stuff. Would right. you do me a favor, Nina, and tell us your uh, email address? Sure. It's Nina dash, which is a hyphen, not an underscore, Nina dash Miller at att.net. Okay. And your phone number? 618-978-9565. Okay. I'm a farmer. I type slower than that. I got 618. <laughs> 978. Okay. 9773. Thank you. Okay. So uh, if, if anybody wants to contact you about uh, um, more information and signing up for the program, they can do that. And uh, um, right. So you're, does it, uh, are you looking for artists of any particular medium or are any artists of any medium in the best Missouri hands can sign up and be on the list? All of our juried artist mediums. So there are, are lots of those. So anybody who is a juried artist. Right. So can an artist put their name on a list for a school visit in their area or I guess being virtual, yes. they can do it anywhere, right? Yeah, I, th I think that's what we need to start really working toward because um, everything has become virtual. And it, you know, it, it just, it makes it possible to visit a school in any area, even a rural area, as long as they've, got the, you know, the technology. Um, and I think pretty much every school in the state now has had at some point in time had to do classes online. So everybody really should be prepared to do this. Um, in addition, I am trying to um, set up a, a library of videos for this program. And I've got my, got my first my first victim, I mean, my first artist uh, <laughs> is set up to record um, next week. And Miss Allison has very kindly offered. And, and for that, it, it's, the same, it's the same work and the same process. It'll be um, just instead of her having a teacher to work with, um, it'll be me. I'll be off camera interviewing her, but I'll be guiding her through answering the same kinds of questions and she'll be showing um, the, the process and works in progress, um, some tools, some supplies, all the things that she would do in a classroom visit and I'll be recording it and then we'll have it up on YouTube at hopefully um, where schools can actually just 
I, I think at first we might do it as a an invitation. We'll we'll have the videos be private, um, and we'll have schools. All you have to do when you make it private is you give somebody a link, and then they can can view it. So they'll be given an invitation to watch the video, but it'll be the same basic thing that they would get through um, a classroom presentation. And I'm hopeful that if I can get more artists. Um, it's been a little bit of a struggle to get artists willing to to let me come to their studio and and record them. But um, I've got got the first one. And so once I get that done, then hopefully there will be more. Uh, have, have you put that out on the uh, Best Missouri Hands member only page? Or have you just contacted certain artists? Not or? yet. Okay. So, so that's something that at some point I might like put out an invitation. Right. Okay. Right. Right now, it's sort of private invitation okay. because I don't really know what I'm doing, and I don't want to advertise something that I'm not absolutely certain I can do. Right. So, um, I feel real comfortable working with Allison, and um, that way because I'm, I'm not an expert videographer and I've done you know some and I've done some video editing, but this will be a big project for me. So assuming that I can do it and it works out, then at that point, I'd like to issue a, a more public, a more public private invitation. <laughs> right. Well, I, I think that's excellent. I got my fingers crossed that that goes well for you and stuff. So, um, and thank you, Allison, for being the guinea pig for this, because I think it'll be a great thing. Um, so, so the artists, do they have to have certain uh, qualifications? Um, do they need to be a juried best miser hand artist? I mean, what, what do you need from our artists? Yeah. Um, we have, and, and this was before I was on the board, it was decided that artists should be juried. Um, so that is a, the basic requirement. Um, and then beyond that, there is some paperwork involved. Um, there, there's a paperwork ahead of time where we'll get sort of basic information about, uh, about the artist, um, where they intend to go, the teacher, that kind of thing. And then afterwards, the teacher and the artist will fill out a form that just documents what they did during their visit, uh, the teacher needs to take at least one picture showing the artist doing their presentation. And if it's done through Zoom, they can get a screenshot of it and send that to me. Just, you know, we, we just want documentation of everything. Uh, and there are, um, there, there are questions asked of the teacher that help us with future visits. So, um, that's one of the reasons it's it's not we're not just checking up on people we're actually trying to get feedback about um, what you know what the artist did from the what the artist's program did for them and if there is any improvement that they would suggest for future visits right i i know that uh um, and that documentation right? serves sorry sorry that documentation serves as the um, basically request for payment too. So before somebody gets paid, um, they have to turn in their documentation. And, and I know that we like for uh, the artist to write just a paragraph or anything about their visit. And if they would supply that photo, because we like to put that news in the newsletter and uh, just to show what our artists are doing and, and uh, that the program is out there and available and stuff. So. Uh, so that's one of the requirements to the to just do a little write up for the newsletter and uh, for like you said documentation for for payment and stuff so um how about uh if the if the school allows it's also uh, it's also important um that kind of documentation is also important to support grant requests mm -hmm. and um so that's another reason for it and it it can either be for a grant that's already been received, or if future grants are going to be applied for, um, you always need photos. Um, 
sometimes video is helpful, but definitely notes, explanations, you know, how it benefited. Every grantor wants to know how what you did benefited the community. Yeah, and how many students were served, you know, so so there's it's good to have a head count on the students and stuff like that. So so yeah, there's a little documentation, but it's not uh, it's not outrageous and uh, um, you know it helps all the way around. Now, if someone if an artist is going to do uh, virtual, uh, Nancy, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to mention one thing. Now this sounds little, but since I was involved with both visiting artists and the grant, <clears throat> it's very important in that documentation to have what the name of the school and where the school is, because I, I spent a lot of time trying to search that out because artists would not give me that information. Maybe they didn't ever write it down. So they knew where it was, but they didn't know the address. And I just needed, you know, real specific information about the school itself, the name of the teacher, you know, stuff like that. So that's like housekeeping, yeah. but it's important in no, that, that documentation. That's actually part of the questionnaire, Nancy. It's it's very, Good. very thorough, the, the document. And I didn't prepare that. Mary Drastel created Mary did. the, yeah, yeah she, she created those documents, yeah. the, the questionnaire. So um, it's very thorough and it has, it has all of that information that you mentioned. So good. Yeah. good. Uh, how about it, if an artist is doing a virtual visit and stuff, is there any special equipment that they would need or, or do they just need to have Zoom? I think um, Zoom, a camera, um, a computer or an iPad and I found that having a separate microphone and headset works best because um, when I did when, when I do mine, I set up a table that's a few feet away from my computer where I show my work and do demonstrations. And I think it's very hard to hear people talking if uh, and it's hard for you to hear the people on the screen talking in. in I, I have to have it going right in my ears and coming right out this way. So um, I, I bought this headset. It's this is wireless so that I can get up and move around. And it, it's just been absolutely wonderful for 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 Zoom and for um, doing demonstrations. Yeah, I could say that. I even yeah. taught a class. Go ahead. No, I just said I, I taught another class this way um, where just using this headset and and you know being being able to get up and move around um, was really important because my pieces tend to be big and you know I had a big table set up with a lot of stuff and so I had to get much farther away from the computer. Well, uh, yeah, having good equipment definitely helps. And Nancy said, uh, and reliable internet, which uh, living out here in the boonies, I can understand <laughs> that completely. Um, how about, you know, with COVID and stuff, since we're still unsure of, you know, how things are and everything, um, if the school is allowing in-school visits, is it required that the artists uh, be vaccinated and wear a mask? I mean, are there um, protocols in place for that? You know, that's going to be up to the individual school and the teacher. And um, the, the school that I work with does require masking. All the students and teachers uh, wear masks. And they have not ha had visitors in the school for two years. Uh, they don't even allow parents in the schools. Um, at one point, and I'm not sure if this is true right now, but at one point, the teachers we had to remain in their own classrooms all the time. The teachers didn't move from room to room. The students would move from room to room, but they're, they're really trying to um, keep everybody safe. And um, so that was how we came to meet on the sidewalk and do everything um, via Zoom. Now we had planned this year for me, they were going to allow masked vaccinated 
visitors into the school. And if I had done my demonstration earlier in the year, I probably would have been able to, would have been able to, to go in person. But at the moment, since I don't usually do it until, until May, at the moment it looks like it's going to be virtual again, but uh, you know, every, every school is going to be different. Not everybody has a mask mandate, not everybody is going to require a vaccination. Um, and, and artists have to do what they're comfortable with too. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, but that's gonna be something you negotiate with the school. Uh, understandably. All right, how about a, um, like if an artist gets signed up with the program and everything, how many visits could they do in a year? Is there a limit or? Yes, um, three. Okay. Each artist is allowed three. Okay. Three that, well, you could do more than that, but three, three that you'll get paid for. Okay. All right. How about, uh, um, we already covered a compensation that you can get hundred dollars per visit and up to hundred dollars for supplies if needed, if doing a project. Um, how long is the average visit? Um, usually one art class period and the school that I regularly visit, that's about 45 minutes. So um, we pack a lot into 45 minutes. I, I would say we plan the first half to be um, demonstration where I, um, let me find my note about what I do. Um, I talk about any science that's involved. This is something that all artists can do to talk about science that's used in your artwork. Um, if temperature matters, uh, the raw materials, how the materials are made, if they're unusual. Um, I show real samples of materials and describe them. And I tell them how I acquire the materials and the, the form they come in. Um, I show some of the, my supplies. Uh, then I show kind of a basic skill. So if you're a, a painter, you would just paint something. Um, you could draw. Uh, what I do is I usually cut glass, which is always really fun because you know you don't really cut glass, you score it and then you break it. And that's always exciting. Um, you could form something simple out of clay if you're a, a ceramic artist. You could have your sewing machine there if you're a fiber artist and just quickly sew something. Uh, you can show your studio either in person if you're brave enough or um, you can show, show pictures of your studio. Um, you're gonna talk a little bit about how you do your work and show some of your tools you can either show the real tools, um, hold them up. I always have a, a glass scorer and uh, breaking pliers, and um, you, you can show pictures of other tools. I use saws, um, pow big power saws. And so I just show pictures of those. And the kilns, of course, are fun to, to look at. Um, I even have a picture of the kiln outlet because it looks like a little scared face and everybody likes to, to see that. Um, you would show um, how you, what your process is and how you go from choosing your materials to creating and, and finishing. Um, I always have a glass piece that's in um, whole pieces of glass and then I, I cut some of it and then I show a piece that's the same piece. I try to have the same piece in different stages where the raw materials, the pieces cut, uh, the pieces assembled, and then the pieces from the, after the first kiln firing. And then I show the, the, the mold that it goes in in the final kiln firing and then the piece after the final firing. So that, you know, you wanna have, let the students get an idea of what it takes to make something from, from start to finish. Um, and I, I tell them how long it, it actually takes to, to create things um, and, you know, how long that it takes the kiln 
to run because a lot of people think, you know, you just, you make something or people think that a painter does something in a few minutes. And um, I know that there are colored pencil artists who spend hundreds of hours creating a drawing. Um, and, and I think it's important that kids understand that, you know, there, there's, there's talent and then there is time and, uh, you know, what you do with your, your talent. Um, I think it's fun to tell people how you got started, uh, what attracted you to the art that you do, um, what kind of education helped you. Uh, I didn't go to art school. I have a degree in romance languages, which um, didn't help me do anything. But, um, you know, it was fun. I had fun going to college. Um, but what the education that did help me with glass art was to go to glass studios and learn from other glass artists. And I've, I've taken lots of classes and learned from them. Um, and then I think it's important to talk about um, what happens to your work when, when you finish it? Um, how do you sell it? And where you sell it? Uh, and I always do a little bit of self-promotion. I tell them uh, my website address and my Facebook page and my Instagram and the galleries that I'm in. I invite them to visit me in the galleries. I even tell them when I work at the gallery. So maybe they'll come and see me there. Um, and if they come to my website, they could see, you know, if, if there are shows or anything like that. So, um, you know, it, it, kids often don't realize how much work goes into art. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that they learn that, but it's also important that they see the pleasure that you get from your art. Right. I agree a hundred percent. And it sounds like, um, you have put in a lot of time and research and and uh, developing a program and stuff. So I, I would encourage that if, if someone is interested in uh, being a part of the uh, visiting artist program, you got to you got to do some homework beforehand. You got to get a uh, um, a program kind of put together in your head and on paper and and uh, know what you're going to cover with the kids and stuff. So so I appreciate all the time you've put into developing uh, your own um you know, uh, presentation for the kids and stuff, because uh, you've put a lot of time and thought into it. Um, we had a couple of questions Thanks, I'm going to run through. Oh, you, you're welcome. Thank you. I'm going to run through a couple of questions we had on the chat, and then we'll open it up and see if anybody's got more questions. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, one of them was, was, is there an online area that teachers can come to to pick it pick someone to teach in their class or their school? Is there like a catalog or, or is that something that's in the works where, um, you know, or is, is it just, you're gonna try to match a teacher with an artist and? It's me. Um, there, we're not, I don't think we're that big that we need. And I mean, it's, it's kind of an interesting idea, but um, I think I'm the, I'm the keeper of the catalog. So, um, you know, but maybe this would be something that we could add to the website. Um, I'm gonna make a note of that. Okay, yeah. I think as the program grows, you know, just like you're gonna be uh, visiting with Allison to make a, a video for YouTube and stuff. Um, I think there's potential for growth, but there's also, a need for manpower and stuff. So if anybody out there is interested in being on the board or you don't have to be on the board to be on a committee, you know, but uh, so there, there, there's, it takes people to do these things, make these things happen. And so we appreciate the work you put into this. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, someone mentioned too, that uh, by being a visiting artist, that would be a good thing to put on your resume. You know, like as an artist, I have not kept a resume. And yeah. I'm at the point where I need one right now. And so I need to go back through and build all this stuff up from scratch. And, uh, but being a visiting artist is something definitely that would uh, look good on your resume. Um, someone said that they are so, Cindy said she's so impressed with what you've put into this. So, and I am too, you've done a great job. Um, is this service open to college? Well, I know. Um... Go ahead. You know, that is definitely something that the 
committee could explore because I mean we we talked this year for the first time I think about seniors and I I have a friend who lives in an independent living retirement center and so I I bring musical events to her place and I thought she actually just told me that they have an art gallery in in their um, she lives in a small apartment in in the center and so I'm thinking you know maybe we should have it. she she said it's not it it we shouldn't get excited thinking that we're going to sell art from their little art gallery because most of the seniors are are not acquiring art you know they they live in little apartments and um, but they like to look at it mm -hmm. and so I thought when she told me that they have a little gallery there I thought well. If there are people who like to display their art, who you know aren't feeling anxious about getting it sold, that maybe we could put a little display there. Um, they are, of course, in a position where they're not welcoming a lot of visitors right now. But um, they do have they they have an auditorium, and they have the ability to show things on a big screen. Um, so I'm talking to, they have a, a brand new activities director and I'm trying to give her a little breathing room before I hit her up for doing um, video presentations to them. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not sure that there's any reason why we couldn't expand it beyond elementary and high school. Um, I, I can't see any reason why not. I, I agree 100%. And that's one of the questions is this, um, all open to like colleges or higher education. So basically kind of what it sounds like if 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 somebody reached out to Best Missouri Hands and, and said, we'd like an artist uh, to present to our class or workshop or whatever and stuff, we basically could probably try to meet those needs. I don't see why not. Nancy, do you think there's any reason why we couldn't do that? Not now. I mean, earlier we were kind of in a box. We had to present to elementary and high school because of our grant situation. I see. But we can do, we can do a much broader thing. One thing to remember is that if we actually have a catalog where the teacher out in, um, you know, St. Joe, Missouri wants to have a, a painter, you know, for a class. The painter will only, and you know, the painter's already been paid and everything for for the uh, project or talk. They they won't continue to get paid every time somebody views their video. Oh, right. That's just something to know. But it could be a valuable resource. I mean, really, this has potential that we haven't even thought about yet, where we can really serve members of the community and serve the artist. Because every time, every time an artist who mostly works alone, you know, a lot of us, we work alone and we, we don't get out in the community and um, it raises our standards and our, you know, the quality of our sharing and helps us to learn a new way. I mean, we've all learned this new thing. None of us wanted to be on camera, you know. <laughs> But uh, we've all been learning new ways of doing things. And, um, you know, I just think that the world is different now. And we're responding, you know, like we use the word pivot. We pivoted from the in-person to the virtual in a pretty seamless way. And as we continue to see the changes that technology is bringing, we're able to um, we're able to respond, which is really exciting. And just think about it. If you're an artist, I mean, I'm getting wordy here, but stop me if I need to. But uh, if you're an artist, say, that lives in Colombia and has some, uh, you know, really excellent skill, and there's some little town in northwestern Missouri or northeastern Missouri that never has a artist come in. You can get known, your artwork can get known, your, your person can get known. And that little boy or girl who sits there who has skill and has love 
of something artistic and go, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I could do that. It's it, to me that I can practically cry. It is so moving to me, the opportunity to open up something so lovely for a person's whole life. You know, you can't do some things. You can't always play handball your whole life, but you can do art. You know, it's, it's an incredible gift to give to students and it's really, it gives back to the artist too. So, you know, one, one of my first classroom demonstrations was um, an, a teacher who became an art teacher a week before school started. She was not an artist and she was not an art teacher, but the school was, was desperate. It was a small uh, religious school and they were desperate for an art teacher. And so she, she took the job saying she would learn. And she went to an art show um, in August and walked around and uh, picked up cards of artists whose art she liked, lots of different mediums. And then she started calling us and I was one of the ones that, that she called. And she was lining up a different artist for each week to come into the school and demonstrate a different art medium. And so I went um, and, and did glass one of the weeks and I did a project with the kids and I brought in samples of my work. And the, there, this was before I was involved with Best of Missouri Hands and um, with the visiting artist. And I, I, so I didn't get paid, I just did it because the woman asked me to. And then she actually bought several of my pieces that um, I had brought in to, to show. And it was really enjoyable for me um, to, to do the presentation with the class because I felt like every time I explained my process to someone else, I learned something about it. And when the students asked questions, I realized two things. Um, that I know a lot about what I do and that there's a lot that I don't know still about what I do. And both of those things were very helpful for me to learn. But I thought this teacher was so clever that she, she took on being an art teacher without knowing anything really about art and then found a way to do it through having artists come and visit. And it just, it seemed brilliant to me. And so after I did that, and then I heard about Best Missouri Hands and the visiting artists, I thought, oh, well, this is just the perfect thing for me because um, now I can do it and um, you know, have it be a real program. And I, my goal for doing at least the first video, um, and we do have, Best Missouri Hands does have a, a YouTube channel. I saw that question pop up, um, that my hope is that once that's up and we let people know that it's there, that they can get an idea of what, what a presentation in a classroom is like. Um, now there won't be students you know, to ask questions, but it'll be as close to what I hope people will do as a classroom presentation as, as we can, can make it. Um, so, oh, look, we have a puppy. <laughs> Well, I think that's excellent, uh, Nina. Do you do you mind if we open it up for questions? If anybody has no, questions, go ahead. Uh, if anyone has a question for Nina, please unmute yourself and uh, um, you know ask away because uh, this lady knows knows what's going on here. So if you're interested, and in, uh, you know, uh, I know Allison. I know you had a question or two. So unmute yourself and ask. Actually, the person, those questions and comments that you've been seeing, that's me. I just still come up as Nancy's picture. <laughs> so there's certain, certain <laughs> ones that I have been asking. It's like, you're answering parts of them, but I was <sighs> curious about one thing, because the more you guys were talking, the more I was like, hey, she could do this, and we could do that, and can we do seniors, and can we just, you know, you just start thinking of all the ideas. Sorry, mm -hmm. me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Allison. You're good at, at finding work for me, and I'll do the same for you. I know. See, that's the that's thing. Yeah, I know it's coming back and, and getting me. Um, but it was curious question when you were saying, like, the PowerPoint presentation, is there a way to 
incorporate a video. So maybe if we are, if we're demoing something, because I'm thinking for me, if I wanted to take a piece of metal and show them how I form in a flower, and I just do a very, very short, short video, just watch it, you know, they can see it, they can watch a little bit of it. Is there a way to incorporate that into, uh, or would that be a good idea, especially for these, this online, I know like mm -hmm. there's through iStock, you know, the videos, some of the, um, you know, some of the um, online workshops we have, which were about video. And so learning how to do that, maybe it doesn't have to be a long one, but it could be a little short blurb on, you know, how to form a piece of metal, or I'm looking at, you know, I'm thinking about sitting I, I, there and, and maybe she shows that back side or, you know, something like that. Allison, if you, if you shot a video and you had it on your computer and you're in a Zoom workshop, all you'd have to do is hit share your screen and you could then show that video okay. to, you know, so, so absolutely you could incorporate video. Now, Zoom. Because I'm just thinking that might be a way to do yeah. it too. I think you'd, you'd probably want to have it um, opened up on your computer before you start mm -hmm. so that it's, it's there and, you know, easy to find. Um, I do think I, I watched mm -hmm. a, um, a, a workshop recently where they started live and then they went to some video demonstration. And I have to say, I lost interest when the video came up because it went on too long. And I, I knew it wasn't live and I felt like, well, if I'm going to watch video, I might as well just go to YouTube. And it, it was too passive and I like interaction. So um, I think if you can show something live, that's best. But if you're, if, if you're nervous about showing something live, then, you know, if it's a difficult procedure that you want to make sure that you, you know, have, have one, one take and you, and you can show it perfectly. Okay. Um, but for the most part, I think live is better. The, the PowerPoint works when you want to show things that are not where you are. And so like in my case, my kilns are downstairs. Uh, my cutting surface is downstairs. And those were just, I, I did, I, I went back and forth between my live talk and my PowerPoint. So I didn't put up the PowerPoint and go through it. I hate when people put up a PowerPoint presentation and then sit there and read to you from it. I, I just, I wanna throw things at my screen. So <laughs> PowerPoint works when you go back and forth. And it, it was a little tricky because this whole, you know, share screen thing um, gets complicated. And I also had, I had my iPad in front of me with notes and I was almost using it sometimes as a teleprompter. And I was so afraid that I would lose my place there and then not be able to go back and forth. I mean, I, I made myself a little bit crazy, but um, I, felt like it was important to show the kids some things that I couldn't show them live on the screen, but not too much of it at one time. Is that, yeah, the only reason, and that's what I was curious because when you were saying nervous, but something that could be like, I'm thinking like a jewelry artist, you know, flame, things that you can't make a actual, you make a mistake, it might end up being a little bit more detrimental yeah. to yourself and detrimental for children to see you, you know, like take off one layer of your, 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 your um, yeah, you know what? Yeah, we yeah. don't want blood so on saying, screen. Little, like, <laughs> see it a little, okay. just, but not, but I understand what you're saying, like not long and not right. just redundant and everybody just watching, but just that little taste of like, oh, you get to work with fire is just enough to get them excited, but not yeah. enough to make them go like, oh, you know, either fall asleep or you, you know, like I said, that could be definitely, you know, you're trying to make sure you're talking and flame. And yeah. that's the only reason I was asking, you know, at yeah. me and sawing, I don't want to go. And then, yeah, that's a good question. Oh, yeah. No, I think if you if you can make it ex exciting and flame is definitely that would be exciting. Um, I talk a lot in my presentation about temperature. And the first thing that freaked me out was that the kids do um, Celsius. And I, I had to redo everything. After my, my first demonstration, 
where I was, you know, talking about 1500 degrees Fahrenheit and they're looking at me like, what is that in Celsius? And I'm like, oh, heck if I know. <laughs> so I redid my, uh, my notes with all my temperatures in Celsius because apparently that's what they're doing in school now. Who knew? Um, but yeah, they, they, um, they love, they love things that are, I talk about the danger involved. Um, and before we would do uh, glass in the classroom, um, I would make sure that there were band-aids and, um, I haven't ever had anybody fortunately yet hurt themselves, but I have been very careful to make sure that any glass that I had kids handle um, was ground. It was, you know, so that it was smooth and not the sliceable kind. Um, and I also put it down on the table um, and didn't just, you know, hand it to them to hold. Um, because, you know, Chris, Christine knows there, there will be blood <laughs> uh, on occasion yeah. in, the, in the glass studio. Um, yeah. But, you know, yeah, we try to, we try about. not to have it with kids. Yeah. How about Lois? Did you have a, did you have a question for uh, Nina? Yes. Yes. Um, I was just going to write it. Um, when I was teaching, I could hyperlink a video into my PowerPoint. Hmm. And Allison might be able, as long as it's sitting right on your computer, those um, videos that she does very quickly, she speeds up. Yeah. She could hyperlink that process right into her video, uh, into her PowerPoint if she just has a short PowerPoint or even a long one. But there used to be a way. Now this, this is, I've not been teaching in the classroom for a few years. So I'm not familiar with what PowerPoint capabilities are right now. Mm -hmm. They're probably improved. I would think they'd be much improved. Okay, well we are, we are. Yeah, we are up I, I, to our. Yeah, we are up to our hour. So I was just going to see if anybody else has another question for Nina before we uh, thank her and let everybody get on with their day. Any more questions? Well, Nina, I will tell you what. Nice job, nice job. Glad to have you uh, uh, in charge thank of you, the Nina. visiting artist yeah, program. Thank you, Nina. Yeah, you're doing a doing a great job, and uh, hopefully this excites uh, some of our members to contact you. I put your uh, email and phone number in the chat, but I will also put that on the Best Missouri Hands uh, member only page. And uh, um, you know, hopefully you'll you'll get some people contacting you and and get some artists on the list so uh, we can get more of them in the schools, whether it's in person or virtual. Because uh, I think that's a great adaptation that has come about from all this. So we can keep keep yeah. things rolling and, and keep sharing what we do with the kids and stuff. So um, yeah, that's your job. So everybody well, good? And I'm hopeful that after I record Allison um, on Monday that, you know, I, my hope is that maybe by the end of the week, I'll have a vid video edited um, that we can put up on YouTube and let people know um, how it's done. Okay, that'd, that'd be, be fantastic. And good vibes. <laughs> how about with me? How about if you <laughs> shout out your uh, website real quick, Nina, before we close out? So if anybody, wants um, my my glass website. Mm -hmm. My are you yeah. talking about my glass website? Um, yeah. It's yeah. Fab Four Fused Glass. F A B B number four fusedglass.com. Uh, the Fab Four, not the Beatles, um, but I at one time had four cats, Freddie, mm -hmm. Amy, Beth, and Blackjack. Mm -hmm. And we always called them the Fab Four. And so <laughs> for some reason, I became Fab for Fused Glass. Mm -hmm. And well, now perfect. there's only that's Amy cute. and Beth. But so I could be the Ab for Fused Glass, but... <laughs> That, that is per perfect. All right, everybody, hope you enjoyed the presentation today and uh, um, see you online. Have a good day. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.